Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Youth Man. Over the past several days, we've been going to 13 home theaters in just four days. And I'm up here in Wisconsin and Illinois. We've got some exciting home theaters to share with you here on the channel. And today, as you can see, I'm not in my home theater, but I'm in my friend David's home theater. He's gonna share with you this incredible home theater setup that he set up in his basement. And so David, why don't you share with my audience your incredible home theater. Hello and welcome to my home theater for the everyday guy on a budget. This theater was built for less than $4,500 and most of what you see has been built by hand if it was able to be done so. The room dimensions are 22 feet deep, 12 feet wide, and seven and a half feet tall. We have an acoustic drop ceiling, velvet near the screen to reduce any reflections, and our screen is built with spandex, 132 degrees diagonal, black underneath the white, and then we have our main speakers behind. Our main speakers are do-it-yourself sound group, HT12s, which is a 12 inch speaker with a horn tweeter. Those were built by hand and they sound phenomenal. And they are sitting on what's called a VBSS subwoofer. They are 18 inch, Dayton PA 460s tuned to 15 Hertz and the left center and right mains are sitting on top of those and that's what we have behind our sound stage. Okay so our screen is actually held on by two cleats behind the screen and it actually just lifts off. To reveal our three additional subwoofers and mains and here you can see the HT12s that comprise of the left center and right and funny enough when we pulled the screen off the wall we had to realign this because we had uh, vibrated it off axis and that is thanks to our additional three VBSS subs that the center channels are resting upon. So we're behind the screens and you can see the construction of this do-it-yourself screen built with one by fours and this makes it extremely light, cheap, but sturdy. You can see the black spandex that is behind the white when you're actually viewing it from the front. And this increases the contrast for the screen. Here you can see the spandex is literally just stapled to the rear end of this. You can do this by yourself and you'll have a great screen in no time. And we have two cleats on either side of the screen to secure it in place. It won't vibrate off your screen frame wall and it's easy to take down. So moving on we have our do-it-yourself sound absorbers built by 1x6s and then we have Roxol Safe and Sound and these are at the first reflection points for our left, center, and right speakers and that's just to minimize any bounce back from the acoustics makes everything sound concise and one thing that a lot of people will have uh, problem with in their room are difficulties. Within this cupboard we have our breaker box and we have an issue to where our left surround would have been right in the way. And so we have built the speaker inside this cavity and insulated it with the Roxol Safe and Sound and that's eliminated one issue that we could have had. Uh, building in a room in a regular house, you're going to have these issues and you've got to think about it and most of the time you can figure out a good solution. So when you're building on a concrete floor, you'll typically have the problem of you'll lose your sub 20 hertz tactile feedback. And to eliminate this issue and have a little bit of fun, we have built ourselves a hover boss. What a hover boss is, is we have the recliner that is sitting on a platform. Underneath the platform we have inner tubes and within those inner tubes we have subwoofers in the lower cavity. And what that's going to do is that sound pressure will actually shake this top platform which in turn relates to tactile feedback for the listener. And this is great for people in apartments as well because this isn't pr producing SPL. This is purely just to shake you and make it seem like you have a lot of subs in your room, 
but you're not walking out, ears ringing, possible headache, neighbors calling the cops. This is fantastic. It's cheap, low power, high impact. And here we can see the inner workings of the Hover Boss. You can see the one, two, three, and four GTX 1200 subwoofers. Those are 12 inches. And we've got an inner tube that surrounds two subwoofers at a time. And that provides you a cavity that allows you to pressurize the platform. And to fill those inner tubes, we've made a manifold out of quarter inch PVC tubing. We've connected all of those tubes together and th thus we've only got one line that runs out of our platform. That allows us to fill this and check the t PSI when needed. And to stabilize the platform even further, we've got a third inner tube right here, and that allows this platform to be stable when you're stepping on and off from the chair. So in a home theater, the name of the game is Contrast. And for this reason, I've got a drop ceiling that comes matte black from the factory. And then closer to the screen, I've actually got black velvet. And this is to reduce reflections off from the ceiling when you're watching a movie. The issue that you may run into with a acoustic ceiling that's got our crossbars is the crossbars can be shiny. And to solve that problem, I actually used the soft part of Velcro and attached that to the crossbars. And that eliminates that reflection. You do not see any of this ceiling during a movie. And to further enhance contrast, we have built are velvet panels that create a shadow effect, a shadow box effect when you're watching a movie. And again, that just makes you feel like you're more immersed when you're watching a movie. And all of this can be done easily with one by threes, one by fours, and just purchasing velvet from your local store. So one of the little details that you may notice is we've got our lights in the ceiling. Those lights come with a shiny surface on them and so what I've done is bought velvet with adhesive on the back and actually applied that to the light housings and then cut that out so that way we can still actually tilt our lights like they are from the factory but we're eliminating those reflections at the same time. And the sound system configuration that we have in this room is a 7.1.4 with four subwoofers and then eight subwoofers underneath the chairs. And that means that we've got our three main channels, left, center, and right, our two side surrounds, our two rear surrounds, and four speakers in the ceilings. And all of the surrounds are 6.5 inch Sony in walls. And this is just a safe space in a smaller room. And here you can see one of the subwoofers in this room. This is a VBSS design that houses a Dayton PA460 18 inch subwoofer. And this is tuned via a port to 15 Hertz. This subwoofer will actually only cost you about $250 to build yourself using 3 quarter inch MDF and just covered with Duratex. And providing the image for this room is a Sony VPL HW40ES. This is a 1080p projector that provides a great image and great contrast for its price point. In a smaller room, you sometimes need an extra seat or two because we've really only got two main seats. And so I've got a smaller chair that I picked up from Walmart, and this is light enough to where I can pull it into place if you've got a third person. Makes it pretty handy, but at the same time, it doesn't cramp your room if you don't need it to. In our theater, we have our NVIDIA Shield Pro, and that's what we use. We've got Cody that actually draws data from our two external hard drives where we store our backed up movies and demo scenes. The NVIDIA Shield is extremely nice because the remote control is Bluetooth, so it doesn't need to be in the same room as your seating. And we've got our 3D glasses. If you do want to watch a 3D movie, the Sony projector will allow you to do that. And below, we have our Denon 5200. I really like this receiver because it will do everything that you actually want it to do without breaking a sweat. Now, speaking of breaking a sweat, we've got the powerhouses of the rack. We've got our iNuke 1000 DSP. That will actually power the Hover Boss, those eight speakers underneath the seats. This is more than enough to provide you with what you need. And that's why it's an economical option. And below that, we've got our iNuke 6000. This is actually overpowered for the four VBSS subs 
but it's what I had on hand from a previous build. The crown amplifier at the very bottom powers the rear two Atmos speakers. So thanks for stopping by my theater, and I hope that you've learned a few tricks to build a theater on a budget that can still look and sound phenomenal.